Hi everyone, it's your Friday, April 3rd um, update and I just wanted to tell you about a couple things today. So dialectical journals, like if you didn't watch my video from Wednesday, you should definitely go back and watch my video from Wednesday before you panic about those dialectical journals. Uh, there are things, there's secrets, there's ideas. Um, practice presentations, if I'm missing a practice presentation from you, I messaged you yesterday, I may have called your mom, uh, happens. Um, I need those practice presentations. So make that happen. Um, cap and gown. If you are one of the people who was asking me about cap and gown pickup, um, I posted an image from Grovetown's Instagram yesterday and on that list it tells you exactly how that's going to happen. It even tells you how you can order a cap and gown if you haven't done that. So go look at that Instagram post or go look at the image that I posted yesterday. Um, we got a lot of really good information yesterday about a lot of different things. Um, graduation and prom. We still don't know anything about graduation and prom, but Baker has told me that he's going to have those things, even if we have to have them in the middle of the summer, because he knows how important it is to you, and Baker is not the kind of person who's going to lie about a thing. He's he's very, like, black and white. He doesn't really live in the middle gray area. Like, he, if he says a thing, he's going to do a thing. Um, senior project. I have a meeting about senior project today, so I'll know a little bit more about senior project today. I might not get you any information until Monday or over the weekend because I have to get it to all my teachers first, but we're going to get some answers about senior project today. Um, AP tests. We got a lot of information yesterday about AP tests, and I'm actually kind of excited about the format that they're going to be in. Um, let me share those with you right now. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see what I see. Um, this is a list that I got uh, from a website, um, but I was watching the presentation. All this information is accurate as it, because I heard the, the guy who's in charge of it say it. So our test dates are going to be the 11th of May through the 22nd of May. Uh, they, <coughs> excuse me. They surveyed thousands of students and thousands of teachers, and these are the dates that 87% of people wanted because it's closer to the material, um, and it, it's it's going to give them the opportunity to retain what they've, they've been working on so far. Um, the other thing that's really exciting to me is that teachers are going to get their student responses. I'm going to get your essay, your essay, it's one essay. I'm going to get your essay back. Um, if I get it back in time to use it as a final, okay, beautiful, wonderful. But more importantly, I'm going to get that essay back so I can read it, I can look at it, I can make myself a better teacher, I can tell you what I think about it. Like, that's, there's, there's things there. Like, it's going to be really good. Um, I know some people are really concerned about online exams. They're like, well, Ms. Emerlin, how do we keep, you know, bad people from cheating? Um, they haven't told us all of their their cheating criteria. Um, he said uh, in the video that in fact they're not going to tell everybody everything because they want to keep a lot of that secret because if you tell somebody how you're going to catch them cheating then you can get around that. Um, but he said that he had new they had numerous different ways to catch cheating. One of those ways is actually the teachers getting the responses. So after we get those responses back we're supposed to look at them and if I mean I've been reading your essays all year so if I read an essay and I'm like <laughs> that's not your essay, um, then I'm supposed to flag it and they're going to do a deeper dive into it and look through it and that kind of thing. Um, so that's one of the, that's one of the, the, the ways to get past that. Um, I think that's more, I think he's, he do, they're doing that more for the, for the foreign language tests. Um, they want to make sure that the teacher's like, Hey, is that your student's voice? Is that your student? Blah, 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 that kind of thing. Um, so the other thing that they've talked about is that online exams are going to go to colleges. Colleges will accept those, those, these abbreviated tests. Um, the exams are going to be open book, open notes. These questions will be application based. They haven't told us whether they're going to lock your browser or not. I highly suspect that they're going to do that so that you can't Google on this, on the laptop you're using, but there's nothing wrong with your phone. There's nothing wrong with handouts from class. Um, I know that Mr. Cox and I are going to try to get together a packet of helpful work for you that you can reference. Um, again, we don't want to give you too much stuff because that's going to be, you're going to spend too much time looking at the reference material and not your time writing. Um, but we're going to give you some things like if you get stuck. So open notes, it's kind of exciting. Um, you can type your essay. If you want to type your essay because you're a fast typist, by all means do that. If you want to handwrite your essay, then then do that. Whichever one you do the quickest is totally fine. If you have really intensely bad handwriting, <laughs> um, 
you probably should type it. <laughs> um, cheating protocols, they're going to be very strict. He talked about some of them. One of the things that they're going to do if they catch you cheating, they're, if they catch you cheating, they're going to report you to all the colleges that you applied to. So, and so you'll be blacklisted basically. So don't do that. Um, the other thing that is going to be very concerning is that you're going to have to time yourself. You, there will be a timer on the website, but you will have to pay attention to that. If you submit after uh, 45 minutes, they won't count it. So you have to make sure that you, you spend 43 minutes writing your essay. Um, hold on. One second. Um, so be very aware of that. They, uh, they also want you to make sure that you, the device you log into and start the test is the device you submit from. They're gonna have simulations so that you can practice this new testing style. So when those simulations pop up, I'm gonna send them to you so that you can practice what this testing style is gonna look like, not just for my test, but for everybody's test. Um, and then each response is going to be graded twice. I really like that idea too, because I always hate that one person reads it and they're like, mm, two. I like that two people are going to read this so that there's that, there's that, um, that a wider, a wider opinion. Because I can read an essay and think, oh, this is a four. And Mr. Cox can read an essay and think, oh, this is a six. And then he and I get to argue about it and we come up with a five. Um, but that doesn't happen at the testing, but this year it will. The exam formats, um, AP World, US, Euro, that's going to be a DBQ with five documents. I suspect that's going to look a lot like a synthesis essay. For Lang, I know I have a couple of people that are retaking the Lang exam. That's going to be a rhetorical analysis, which is a lot like um, RQ2, the prose analysis. They're very similar. Um, they're just looking at slightly different things. The lit. Um, is going to be a prose analysis. So every time we pulled an excerpt and we're like, hey, here's an excerpt from the story. What is the relationship? What is the character? What's going on here? What is the motivation? That's what we're, that's that. That is the, that's the, the thing that we're going to be looking at. And we've done several of those. Um, you did some for your Shakespeare. You did, you did one for um, Ethan Frome. You did one for Of Mice and Men. I'm not of my spin metamorphosis. You did one for Heart of Darkness. We have done that type of essay before, um, and I'm happy that that's the essay they went with instead of poetry. That was really scaring me. <laughs> um, uh, all your other exams are going to be two uh, FRQs that are 25 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, your world languages, I know several of you are in AP Spanish. No writing, no reading. It's going to be only listening and speaking. That might scare some of you because I remember some of y'all complaining about that, but at least you know now what you need to practice and listen to and do. So it'll, it'll let you sort of narrow your focus. Um, here's the other thing I think that's going to be exciting for some of you AP Calc students. BC can switch to AB if your counselor allows it. So if that's something that you want to do, like the BC kids, I know that you are freaking out. Um, if you want to switch to AB and take the AB test and counselors allow it, that sounds like what's going on here, but talk to your AP Calc teacher, talk to your counselor, they're going to know a little bit more. There's going to be no AB sub scores this year. All right, so let's look down here at the schedule. I know this picture is a little bit blurry, but I'm going to try to post all this stuff so that you can see it. Um, we are, the AP Lit, the AP English exam is going to be, um, is going to be on May 13th and we'll start at 2 p.m. So at 2 p.m., before 2 p.m., you need to be at your computer ready, logged in, good to go, and then boom, it'll open at 2, it will close at 2.45. Okay, so make sure that happens. Um, plan that out. The calc test is on the 12th, so if you are looking for a specific test here, this, the schedule is up and ready and, and available to be seen by you. If you have any questions that I can answer, um, just let me know. But I'm actually really kind of excited about some of these changes. I think it's going to shake the test up just a little bit and it's going to make it, it's going to bring it a little bit more into the modern era. Um, I know that I could type an essay in 45 minutes without a problem um, because I type very quickly. So I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that this gives some of you an advantage in that area. But if you can, if you want to handwrite it, handwrite it and take a picture. Just give yourself, Give yourself time on either end. So if you're handwriting it, you might want to shoot for a 40 minute essay, which is kind of what we do in class. We usually spend about 40 minutes on that essay. Um, so shoot yourself for a 40 minute essay and then five minutes to take a picture and upload it. All right. Um, again, I don't know what that's going to look like, but there it is. Um, 
So the next thing I'll talk to you about is Infinite Campus. Um, Infinite Campus uh, is going to be unavailable during spring break. So if you try to check your grades during spring break and it tells you you can't see anything or it looks frozen or nothing's changing, that's because we are um, migrating all of our data to the cloud. We do this every spring break and every spring break you cannot get into the grade book. So I can't change things, I can't add things, I can't fix things. Um, so whatever happens today, whatever grades are in the grade book today, they are gonna be in there until probably the Monday after spring break and I can get back in and I can fix some things or add some things or change some things. Um, so don't freak out. Infinite Campus is going to be probably unreachable and it will definitely be unchangeable. So just walk away from it for a whole week. Um, last but not least, grace. I want to reiterate that idea of grace. I know that I contacted several of you yesterday. I may have called your home. Um, I may have been worried about you. Um, I'm always worried about you. But my intention there is to not punish you ever. This is a weird world that we're in, and punishment is not the option. Grace is always the option. I just want you to get the work done. Um, so if you if you got behind if you were in a super depressive state after this announcement this week i totally understand that i'm there with you i i get it i feel that so 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 deeply um but so that's why i'm like i don't i'm not going to count it late i'm not going to say no no you can't turn that in i just need it to to get done so reach out to me tell me you're working on it tell me you're you're making the strides making that effort um and i will have i i will grade that i will get that done for you um I just need it sooner rather than later as soon as you can get it to me because I don't want I don't want that work to snowball on you um, and I don't want I don't want to miss something because I am I'm not grading that thing anymore and I didn't notice that it emailed me and said hey it got turned in late um, don't hesitate to say hey I turned this thing in I know it was due three weeks ago but here it is don't hesitate like turn it in do the work grace is a very important thing right now and I think we all just need a little bit more of it. Um, these next few weeks are gonna get are gonna are gonna look really ugly in Georgia. Um, they're gonna they're gonna get a little scary. Um, I know that the governor has issued a shelter in place warning, which means like if you're not essential, stay home. Um, I mean, you can take a walk by yourself or with your siblings or with your dog, but stay home. If your job is like no, you're essential personnel, maybe you need to reevaluate that job um stay home if you can stay home that's going to be the best for everybody in the long run um and just like find some movies to watch find some books to read find some video games to play for spring break um sleep uh garden like do what you do something around your house um learn to cook like that's a, an important skill if you're going to be in college next year learn to cook <laughs> um learn to do laundry like do some of those things before you get out of this house so that you are a better person when you leave this quarantine. Um, but most importantly, stay home and stay safe. The, these weeks are going to get a little ugly. They're going to get a little scary. Um, but if we can stay home and stay safe, they will look less ugly, less scary. Um, to all of you who have parents in the medical field, like I have, my mom is an emergency room nurse. Um, she's you know, 66 and she's been a nurse for 40 years. So of course I'm worried about her. Um, but you know, we have to, you have to know that they've been trained. They know what they're doing. Um, they're doing the absolute best they can do. Just be strong for them. If you have, um, if like my, my husband works in the grocery field, like, so he's an essential personnel because he's selling people food. Like, so he leaves the house every day and that worries me, but do what you can do. He comes in, he washes his hands. He takes his clothes off. He puts them in the, in the washing machine. He washes them immediately. Like be smart about like sanitation and hand washing and that kind of thing. Those aren't silly things to keep you occupied. Those are real things. Um, but if you have a family who is essential personnel, like I feel for you, I understand that struggle on a personal level. Um, it'll be okay. We'll get through this. Um, don't hesitate to, to reach out if you want to talk to me about literature, if you want to talk to me about your worries and concerns, um, because I know that this is a crazy chaotic world. I hope that you have a wonderful spring break. Um, I miss you. I took pictures of my classroom and I'm just been looking at my classroom and I'm just, I'm, I wish I were back there. I will never talk bad about class again. Um, have a lovely spring break and stay home, stay safe. Miss you guys. Bye.